I guess I better get rid of my coffee machine. What I'm about to show you involves a toxic chemical, a doctor, a physionic subscriber, a reason to unsubscribe from my channel, and oh yeah, a little science to cool things down. So there's this doctor that goes by the name of Mike Hansen, and he recently released this video titled, oh, you guessed it, Killing is Coffee. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Coffee is killing you slowly. Let's hear him out. Known as acrylamide. It's formed when carbohydrate and fat meet at very high temperatures, and it's what gives french fries that great crispy crunch. Acrylamide is also a byproduct of the coffee roasting process. Research conducted on animals has shown that exposure to acrylamide has been linked with brain, breast, and pancreatic cancer. In humans, a recent meta-analysis correlated acrylamide exposure with premenopausal breast and uterine cancer. Now, correlation doesn't equal causation, but there's certainly enough there to warrant concern. Exposure to high levels of acrylamide has also been shown to cause adverse effects on reproductive function in animals. Studies have shown that it can reduce fertility, cause birth defects, and affect the growth and development of offspring. So far, research conducted on humans has suggested that it may increase the risk of miscarriage and preterm birth. Studies have also shown that high levels of acrylamide consumption can increase blood pressure and reduce the elasticity of blood vessels with a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Other evidence suggests that it can cause damage to our liver and our kidneys and even cause gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. The amount of acrylamide in food can vary depending on the cooking method, the length of time that you're cooking, and of course the temperature, as well as the type of food. Now some of the foods that are known to contain the highest levels of acrylamide are french fries and potato chips. Coffee beans naturally contain acrylamide and the levels can increase when the beans are roasted at high temperatures. And I watched this video a little incredulously because I'm thinking to myself, is he seriously going to make the case that coffee is killing us? Well, he did. And the mechanism by which it does that is by the consumption of acrylamide. Acrylamides are the toxic chemical that I mentioned earlier. These chemicals are formed when sugar and amino acids, a component of protein, are non-enzymatically linked together. Basically, excess heating of food leads to the linking of sugar to this amino acid. Now, before it was discovered in foods, it was actually synonymous with plastics, glue, cigarettes, and sewage. Not exactly the most comforting company. I can understand if you're starting to sweat under the collar a little. Have we really been consuming this stuff? Acrylamide is talked about in relation to neurotoxicity as well as cancer. And I'm sure it's linked to plenty of other diseases as well. I won't go into all the mechanisms in this video, but it certainly raises some serious questions. Is there acrylamide in our coffee? The answer is yes. According to this scientific review, they mentioned that acrylamide is found in several foods. But that's no shock, considering that we heat many of our foods. Among them, including nuts, fish, meat, vegetables, and more, was coffee. The supposed elixir of life. At least it feels that way in the morning, am I right? Okay, so Dr. Hansen is right. Coffee contains acrylamides, and it is linked to various diseases through a mechanism that he, at one point, mentions is related to mitochondria. And here is where we get into the second half of our story. That word, mechanism, is really settling into being one of my pet peeves, although a massive portion of physionic is built on mechanisms. I get giddily excited to learn about how the cells of our body act and react, causing changes to the entirety of our body. I mean, one of the slogans is from the macro to the micro, the micro being mechanisms. So why am I making such a big stink out of this? Well, because trying to build a coffee is killing you slowly argument based on a scary mechanism and then relating a bunch of studies that look at acrylamide and not coffee to disease states and longevity is a terrible way to go about getting an appropriate conclusion. I'm not here to deny that acrylamides are harmful to our health, but I am here to deny that coffee is harmful to our health. But before I get into the science, I'd like to mention a few things, one of which being a disclosure. 
My disclosure is that my dad invented a supremely cool coffee mug that he sells for his business, so I may be biased and in cahoots with big coffee mug. I mean, just look at that. The man is making a mug that cools your piping hot acrylamide filled coffee to drinking temperatures within two minutes and maintains a drinking temperature for hours without batteries. Is it his PhD in physics or wizardry? Pure evil, that goes without saying. But anyway, now you know that I may have a heavy bias in favor of coffee because I've been indoctrinated. And if you feel that you need to unsubscribe from my morally reprehensible behavior, I certainly understand. But in all seriousness, he has no idea that I just added this and I have made no money from any of his business. But if you feel this is strong enough reason to unsubscribe, I wholeheartedly understand. Hi, Papa. That said, if we actually look at the amount of acrylamide in coffee, it's pretty pathetic. According to this scientific review, they mention coffee contains acrylamide in ranges between 45 and about 200 micrograms per kilogram. The average person across all acrylamide consumption consumes 0.4 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day, and the highest consumers approach one microgram. Okay, so that's a bunch of numbers. What does that all actually mean? Well, those toxicity studies that Dr. Hansen mentioned, they use between 2,000 and 100,000 times that dose to achieve toxicity as it relates to cancer and neurotoxicity, respectively. So unless you plan on bathing in recently heated caramel, which I suppose I wouldn't blame you, uh, the acrylamide angle from coffee is probably not a factor. But that doesn't mean that acrylamide isn't a factor in some regions, mainly due to poor regulation and environmental reasons, however, not from coffee. Still, how can we prove that coffee isn't going to be killing us slowly? Well, allow me to introduce you to Mario, Mario is a Physionic subscriber. I know that because Mario has had some excellent questions and insights over the years as we've discussed various topics. And I'm just tickled pink. I'll admit I don't actually understand that expression, but let's use it anyway. I'm tickled pink that Mario was the shining voice of reason on Dr. Hansen's video. And fortunately, the internet pushed the comment to the top because the internet can be a pretty great place sometimes. So what did Mario say? Oddly enough, most studies have found a positive correlation between coffee intake and longevity. You're exactly right, Mario. Why focus on mechanisms when you can go straight to the outcomes? Does coffee yield worse health? No. This analysis indicates that coffee consumption is linked to lower mortality risk, improved cardiovascular health. Meanwhile, this analysis indicated a relationship between coffee consumption and reduced depression, reduced diabetes risk. This analysis indicated no relationship between coffee consumption and Alzheimer's risk. So much for that uh, neurotoxicity. Finally, these analyses indicated either no risk or a reduced risk on a series of cancers with coffee consumption. Now, granted, these are typically associative, but if we would have seen some massive toxic effect of acrylamides, I imagine that it would have presented itself at some point in these long-term data. So no, I do not believe that coffee is an acrylamide risk, but what do I know? I've probably been paid off by my dad. Speaking of which, where did I keep that dollar that he gave me? I need to buy some coffee. Mm -hmm.